we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, we want to receive miraculous answers at this time. We believe that it's only the Almighty Father who can do this. May we become someone who obeys the word. And at this time, may we surely receive answers. And our family who we've left behind, may the workings of Matthew chapter 8 happen. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. At this time, God's workings, he will answer. So today's title, the key to miracles is obedience. So even though I tell you this, it's because you don't obey that miracles don't happen. Even though he says he'll help us at this time, we we can't obey. So do you think you're here because you've obeyed? Those who are here because they've obeyed, their faces are filled with smiles. Those who aren't obeying, but they're forcing them here, they're dragged here by their greed and their demons, their faces are like this. Oh, some people are doing well. Why is it that I'm not still doing well? And so they have a triple mind, a double mind, triple mind as they sit here. That person can't do well. So someone who's not doing well, to do well, that's what this key is. You know, if you try to open a door, it's not gonna, it doesn't open. But if you have a key, just open. So what's today's title? So I've just said it, but already you talk about obedience first. So you say obedience first with, without being able to obey. So God, the one who is almighty, let's find 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. He says, you giving worship, if you give worship without forced at repentance, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20, you're giving sacrifice to demons. And that's why you're similar to other religions. There's nothing different. And then you say that you believe in God. Do you know how much joyful news comes? At one time they said forced at repentance is heresy. Now they're saying it's not. Those who say that it's heresy, they have demons. They're heretics. And they're either in factions, which is worse than a dog, or they're slandering others, which is fleshly, or they don't have the Holy Spirit, so they have demons, so they try to live you know, generally, and to say things that are pleasing for other people to hear. And they're worse than a dog. Jude chapter 1, verse 16. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Samuel said, Has Jehovah as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Jehovah? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. Amen. So obedience is better than what? Exodus chapter 3, verse 12 so God, the exodus from Egypt, it's it's so that they would sacrifice to God, so that they will worship him. So that's how important worship is. But more important is obedience. More important than worship is sacrifice, is obedience. So why do we have this worship? To become someone who obeys. And that's why in Hebrews chapter 3, the exodus teaches us obedience. So what's the reason God said this? So for 40 years, they suffered in the wilderness to learn obedience. You know, after 40 years, your life's over. So to not believe in God, you say that you believe and you attend church, but someone who doesn't obey, if they do well, soon you see them. They're ruined in such a terrible, filthy way. What they're doing well now, they'll be ruined in a more terrible way than Japan. They say Japan's in difficulty. You know, this year, if they have a few earthquakes or typhoons, or they have to get all the wood from all over the world and build their houses again. If you keep, even once a year, if you demolish your house, you know, most people can't, they're not going to be able to handle that. So how can we not but pray for our neighboring country? So that's how important worship is. But obedience is better. So what is this obedience? It's the key to miracles. So I give you this title, but you're going to end up saying something else. So obedience is better than sacrifice. What's obedience? The key to miracles. 
So you've come here to receive miraculous answers. If we're, if we're like some other religion, you know, these days, even other religions, they have vigil prayer, even Buddhism. So, you know, we're almost becoming the same. So that's good because we'll become one. But fundamentally, there is only one God. And God, He is inside of the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ. Um, 2 Corinthians, 4 State Repentance, 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. So obedience is the key that brings miracles. What is this obedience? It is faith. John chapter 3, verse 36. You say you believe, but there is a faith, a starting faith, but without obedience, it is a dead faith. That's James chapter 2, verse 17. So faith that doesn't change to actions is a dead faith. So you say you attend church, but you have this dead faith and you're mistaken to thinking that it is faith. If God says he'll help you at this time, then you need to obey the word, but you don't. So then you say that you obey, but as soon as you receive a little bit of answers, you stop doing it. And so you you do things so you're going to be hit again. So once you've received blessings, if you don't obey, then it will change to curses. Malachi chapter 2, verse 2. So because it changes to curses, as soon as you get some money, your child breaks their leg. You get some problem where you have to spend that money. These demons, you can't even say amen. So God says obedience is faith. Let's find Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. This faith is a gift of God. You know, if you have, if you have a reason to to give a gift to someone, how how much do how how much do they please you that you give them a gift? You don't give a gift to someone you can't stand. It's because you, they please you so much. So because it is God's gift, faith is something He gives when you please Him. So when when does God? When is God pleased like that? It's when we serve Christ. Romans chapter 14, verse 18. It's when we serve Christ, when we do forced our repentance. That's when God is so pleased. Because he's so pleased, that's why he has to give us a gift. That's what faith is. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. So God's gift is faith. This faith, which is a gift of God, he doesn't give it to someone he can't stand. He gives it to you when he's so pleased. So when can we please God? It's when we serve Christ. That's when God is so pleased. That's Romans chapter 14, verse 18. So what is Christ? Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. Christ is the mystery of God. So faith is a gift of God. This faith, which is a gift of God, so when we serve Christ, he gives us this gift of faith. So let's find Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith is a gift of God. Forced our repentance, the mystery of God. When you hear the word of Christ, that's when he gives you the gift of faith. So if you don't even do forced our repentance, repentance properly where your personality and your actions don't change how can that be having faith so it's all lies what kind of person am i romans chapter 10 verse 17 so faith it's when we when we please him by serving christ when we do force our repentance that's when faith comes that's when you can obey so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of christ amen so faith comes from hearing. What is it you have to hear? Four step repentance. The the word of repentance, the word of God's mystery. So when you repent and then how much you receive God's word, that is faith. So if a spider web can lift up gold, but it doesn't work with 10,000 strands. It's when you have tens of thousands, that's when you can lift up that gold. So it's when you repent a lot that, that it works. So what is faith? Faith is obedience. John chapter 3, verse 36. So we've read that a lot before, so we're not going to read it today. So you've come here to receive miraculous answers. The reason why we believe in God, you know, other religions don't have this. You know, these religious leaders, they themselves are liars. They're a man. In some ways, they don't even have as much power as this lacking servant. Why would you believe in them? 
Because we believe in Almighty God, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, God says, I am Almighty. How Almighty is He? 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. He makes us dead or alive. He gives us money or takes it away. So the one who is Almighty, because He helps us, that's why miracles help happen. But if you can't even say Amen, these demons, what is it they expect? If you're not even in Christ, how can you expect to receive help? So you say you want to receive answers, but that's what you're doing. So if you obey, then miracles will happen. That's John chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. It's when you obey. Even knowing it's water, you obey. That's where miracles happen. This is the help we've come for. Is this amen? So why is it you don't do well? These, you have demons where you can't even say amen. How can you do well? If you have the Holy Spirit, you say amen. If it's not the Holy Spirit and you have demons, you can't say amen. That's not what we've decided. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, this is what God has appointed. So in Christ, we receive the gift of faith. Just because you receive the gift of faith, that faith, does it straight away live and obey? Well, by forced air repentance, if we cleanse our hearts, yes, we receive this gift of faith. But just because you've received the gift of faith doesn't mean you obey. Why? Because of our our IQ, our EQ, the things we've learned in the world, those who depend on those things, even though God tells you to do something, you don't listen. So this this soul, it, it needs to it needs to get it, it once it's once it's punished, that's when you start to listen. And that's why God says, Let's see what happens when you die. Psalms chapter seventy eight, verse thirty four. So see what happens when you're about to die. You'll even clutch at straws. But at that point even though you say, God, God. So let's say the ice breaks. Even monks will call out to God. But if you call out then, it's useless. So obedience is the key to miracles. So we need to bring about miracles. That is faith. And that's why Matthew chapter 8, verse 13, even the servant you left behind at home, by your faith, even he is healed. So why is it that God wants these miracles to happen? So through us, he wants to appear, to show that he is living. That's the work he wants to do. So if we receive the gift of faith, why is it we can't obey? Because you still have demons remaining inside of you. Yes, you've cleansed your heart cleanly and Christ has entered in, but the, the demons of your flesh, they haven't departed. So your body doesn't listen to the point where you don't say amen. So you think, oh, not saying amen is nothing, but it is such a scary curse. You don't know when you're going to die in some car accident. You could be unfortunate, and so everything you do doesn't work out. It's problematic. You see people who don't do well. You know, your household doesn't do well, and you you can see that you can't even say amen. Even your inside isn't clean, and that's why you can't say amen. So, so let's find 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. So if you're in Christ, you say Amen. If you've truly done forced out repentance, you say Amen. So if you do forced out repentance, Christ comes into my heart, which is faith. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Let's read together. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For as many as are the promises of God, in Him they are yes. Therefore also through Him is our Amen, to the glory of God through us. Amen. So miraculous answers, because God is almighty, even now he gives them. When does he give them? When you obey. So even though you know it's water, you obey and you took it. And that's why it changes to wine. This is the blessing we've come for, to have our diseases healed, to receive material blessings, to have our demons in our household cast out, to be happy for our children to do well, to be to become patriots. That's why we're here. Is this amen? And so if you're in Christ, you'll say amen. So you say you've done forced air repentance, but you don't say amen, then you haven't done forced air repentance. You've pretended to yourself, but you haven't. You see people who don't say amen if, they, if they're if they released, if their household does well. The children are struggling to do well, but the parents don't say amen. And so you see if the children do well. If the children are about to do well, the parents don't say amen. And so they pour this poo water on them and, and, and dirty up their children again. So these elderly people, the senior citizen centers, what they should do is to make themselves and their country do well, which is to go in, 
which is to do the mystery of Christ and say amen. That's when miracles will happen. That's when they give glory. So if you do forced air repentance, if you're in Christ and Christ is inside of my heart, my heart's become clean. You know, whatever sins come out, you've washed it. So you've become clean. Just because you're clean, just because you've washed with the blood of Christ, forced air repentance, and you've made your heart clean, the sins of your heart, Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Let's say you've repented of those sins. Yes, your heart's clean, but your your body still has sins remaining. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. So you have to receive the Holy Spirit. That's when it can cast out all the demons in your heart and your flesh. Let's find Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. So if you hear the word of Christ, you receive the gift of faith. After you receive this, you have to receive the Holy Spirit for all your demons to be driven out. Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And that's why I tell you to put up this Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 up on the wall in your house and to, and to thoroughly repent. If it's not the wisdom of God, Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, you cannot realize the Bible. You know, with worldly studies, the wisdom and knowledge that demons give, you look at the Bible oppositely. And so these pastors, theologians, they look at the Bible oppositely and so they don't have power. But someone who's looked at it rightly, someone, you know, and someone who doesn't, That's why they they argue, but it's the fakes that keep making making excuses, that keep making conditions, that keep trying to nitpick. Someone who looks at it rightly, it has nothing to do with them. Whether a, a, a mongrel is barking or not, they just keep going their way. If you're a mongrel yourself, you won't go, but you'll bark together. But someone who's right, they go off their own way. The, but it's someone who's crooked that keeps saying, oh, it's that elder, that pastor, that deacon. They're wrong, they're wrong. It's because they're going oppositely. But someone who's going rightly, they're bold. They don't have any of that. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, they're bold as a lion. Let's read together. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. So when it says in him, let's read verse 12. Where Where is it inside of? It's Christ. Let's read it. To the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. Amen. So in Christ, in Christ, you receive the gift of faith. So here it says, in Christ, You hear the message of truth, the gospel of your savior, of your salvation, and so you believe, and then, and then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's after believing, so you have to continue to be inside of Him. You have to continue to do four-step repentance. So if you're going to stop midway, do whatever you want. But if you stop midway, then you're going to be a slave of demons. If you continue, you'll receive the Holy Spirit. So when can you obey? If I obey, that's all demons. So not just in Busan or Seoul, or, but in America, the whole world. Oh, I'm going to do all this service at the church. Someone who has demons, who hasn't done forced out repentance, who can't even say amen properly, who has demons. What, they're going, to, they're, going to, they're going to be loyal? That's all a lie. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. So they say they're going to do, you know, they're going to dedicate themselves. And then soon they're saying, oh, this deacon said this, de this deacon said that. They're demons. And they say all these excuses and they stop doing it. And then they'll say, oh, these days my body's not feeling good. And they won't do it. You know what demons also say? Oh, these days my household is so busy my children are like this and so they always have some excuse they always have some condition if you have demons if you receive the holy spirit you do it to the point of death you you so you give up your heart and your life so there's no excuses this work that i've been entrusted with if i'm faithful then miracles will happen so someone so joseph who didn't even receive a pay in someone else's house how could he succeed yet he became governor of the world It's not from receiving some some wage, but it's because he obeyed the word. And yet you don't have this obedience. So, someone who's received the gift of faith, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, when you continue to do four-step repentance, you hear the word when you've received. You know, how much does you, do you please God that God gives you the gift of faith? When you continue to please him, he gives you the Holy Spirit to cast out demons. Let's find Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. It's only by the Holy Spirit that you cast out demons. You know, we talk about all these shamans, but even Pastor Park, it's by the strength of the Holy Spirit that I cast out demons. I can't do it by my strength. So whoever it is, you have demons and you can't cast them out. Shamans, 
they have demons. So shamans, they themselves can't do well. But, you know, the descendants, I'm sure there are people here whose parents were shamans. But in Christ, if we're grafted in, that shamanism has nothing to do with me. We change to become someone who's a blessed man. We'll change today. And that's why miracles happen. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Amen. So it's by the strength of the Holy Spirit, that the power of the Holy Spirit, that you cast out demons. It's not by your strength, by money, um, power, worldly studies, or someone's strength, or guns, or missiles, or nuclear bombs that you cast out demons. So that's what God's Word says. So obedience, which is to bring about miracles, that is a living faith. James chapter 2, verse 17. So you want to live like that. You want to have a living faith to go to heaven and for miracles to happen. You want to do these things, but it doesn't work. What is the reason why it doesn't work? If you hear the word of Christ, you receive the gift of faith. If you continue to force that repentance, the Holy Spirit comes. If the Holy Spirit comes, what gets cast out? Demons. So then how is it you can't say amen? You're sitting there when you hear God's word. In Christ, you say amen. If you say amen, then you give glory. So miracles happen. It's not by memorizing and forcing yourself to say amen that it works. Because God knows our, all of our hearts. Psalms 139 verse 1. He knows our thoughts, our actions. He knows everything. So you ruin yourself and your household. You kill all your children. And you ruin your, your wife. You ruin your husband's business. You make all your children's work not work out. So you do that by not saying amen. And then you sit there lying and saying it doesn't work. And I... I'm here thinking, how much do you have to suffer? You've already suffered so much. You know, your ancestors' filthy iniquities and, and demons. You don't repent of it at all. You don't say, oh, my grandfather or grandmother was so evil. You don't say any of that. And so you're still tied up to three and four generations worth, and you're sitting there going, I'm going to be cursed. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to eat up my family. I'm going to ruin the country. And you sit there like that. So to leave that person, is that love? No, you have to make the make it so they go to heaven. You have to make it so that they receive miracles. Even today, you can do well at this time. Is this amen? It will happen. So obedience has to come out to be a living faith. When does this obedience come out so that we can receive this key to miracles? So it's after receiving the Holy Spirit that you can obey. Let's find 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. At this time, you know, healing disease is so easy to receive money blessings. It's so strange. There's nothing as easy as getting money, but you kind of you're struggling so hard to get it. So when I look at your actions, you, you know, you're you're someone who's going to hell. Someone who receives um, miracles is someone who's going to heaven. These people who say, oh, I don't need miracles. I just, you know, to go to heaven. Obedience is a living faith. What are you going to do with a dead faith? Why is it you can't obey? Because you haven't cast out your demons. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Amen. When does obedience come out? 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. It's when you receive the Holy Spirit, you have to first receive the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. It's when you continue to do four step repentance, you receive the gift of faith. When you continue afterwards, you receive the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. So it's after you receive the Holy Spirit. What's what sign is shown? Matthew chapter 12 verse 28. Your demons are cast out. So if your demons are cast out, how can you not say amen? It's because you still have demons that you can't say amen. The Father's calling. Why can't you answer? Because you still don't have a relationship with the Father. If the electrical wires are connected, why doesn't the light turn on? Because somewhere there's a disconnection. So you saying amen, it's not you and I that do it. It's when the Holy Spirit comes and casts out 
those demons that were stuck to the sin, that's when we can say amen. That is the, the proof that you've received the Holy Spirit. So f- for miracles to happen, first of all, you have to receive the Holy Spirit and to cast out your demons. Why do you receive the Holy Spirit? To, to drive out your demons. Someone who drives out their demons and then does service at the church, no matter what anyone says, it's when someone's saying something to you that's when you have enemies when someone's you know getting you in trouble that's when you receive greater blessings but these demons who do it out of their lusts not only can't they say amen but you see how they do work at the church it's so filthy you can't look at it and then if it doesn't suit their mood oh my body's not feeling good You know what? Die. Have your demons and may it go down to three and four generations and you pass it down like that. But yet they keep making those excuses and they just try to get out of it. And I'm like, they're going to eat up three and four generations. If you're dedicated to the point of giving up your life, how? How can you say you're sick or you're in a bad mood? And this is why miracles don't happen. Because all you do is skin like that. Because of your ancestors' demons. Psalms chapter 5 verse 10. Because of your ancestors' demons, John chapter 8, verse 44, all you do is lie so much and you grumble and complain and you make excuses. Those people who can't say amen, you get them to do some work, that's what they're doing. They pretend to do the church's work, but if then if it doesn't suit their mood, they make all these reasons and excuses. Whatever excuse, you're a demon. They pretend to do false therapists, but they don't do it. And when that person dies, not only is it going to be terrible, but as they live on this earth, they're filled with suffering and their children are cursed. Everything they do, they can't do well. Seems to do well, and then it doesn't. And yet, that's what the parents do. And that's what they themselves do. When can you obey? After receiving the Holy Spirit. After you receive the Holy Spirit. Why do you receive it? To cast out your demons. When are you giving the Holy Spirit? When you continue to do forced out repentance. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. You see these pastors who come and say that they're going to say they could do something. And they're sitting there not even saying amen. They're filthy from their ancestors. They, they can't do well. And yet, because they're deceived by the, their ancestors' demons, John chapter 8, verse 44, they're filled with greed, and all they do is lie so much, and yet they don't know. So looking at what they do, even going overseas, oh, someone will come saying, oh, pastor, you know, you're deceived by your ancestors' demons. So someone who can't receive the Holy Spirit, they still have their demons, so they can't say amen. It's these people. Even though they look at the Bible, it's useless because the Bible kills them. The reason why it kills them is because they say, this is what it says in the Bible. Who does the Bible belong to? It's your food. All you have to do is eat your food. Oh, looking at this food, it says this. That's someone who's cursed. So someone who comes to me making excuses using the Bible, no matter how much I look at the Bible, there's nothing to use the Bible as an excuse for. But that's what demons do. They always make excuses. That's someone who is cursed. You can't. There is no reason to use this Bible as an excuse. This Bible is my food. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 when you're about to eat your food you don't go around the neighborhood saying look, look this is what my food says you know this spiritual food how can you be arguing with someone about it that's why you're a fake so to receive the Holy Spirit and drive out your demons it's someone who's driven them out it's when you're holy and then when you eat the word that's when you can obey so using Bible verses and saying oh this is what the Bible says that's someone who has demons That's someone who is cursed. And yet, you agree with that person. When you agree, you're the, you have the same demons. And so you, you see this with they can't even say amen. If you have demons, how can you say amen? You know, you need to have God in order to, to have God's word. Why? Why can't you obey? It's after receiving the Holy Spirit and then you become holy by the word. Then you have obedience. So to receive the Holy Spirit, to cast out your demons, and then when you receive the word, that is humility. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. So if you have this word and you eat it as your word, that's when you have strength. So when you're told to do something, you obey. So the Yompyong fish, even though the seamen oppose so much, I said, just go, just go. Why? That's what happens when you obey. But 
you you stop midway by yourself. That's a that's a demon. You don't have the word. And these people who just argue about the word. Let's say to the person next to us, you still can't say amen. So even as you say this, don't just sit there. After the after the worship, say to that person, you know what? You say amen one or two times after the pastor says something, but then afterwards you don't say it. Teaching them that. That is love, but you just leave them alone. That means that's not the love of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the love of the Holy Spirit, that is true love. Even now, miracles will happen. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. So it's after receiving the Holy Spirit and becoming holy that you can obey. Let's read together. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Amen. So after receiving the Holy Spirit, just because you've driven out your demons, you don't end there. After you have the Holy Spirit that drives out your demons, to continue to do false day repentance on the rock, you have to continue to eat the word of Christ. That's when you become someone holy. Someone holy, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. It's not just to say, oh, I'm holy. It's where your actions change. So if you can't even say amen, those actions, you know, how can you receive the blessings of miracles? How can you receive the gift of faith and become someone who's going to heaven? Your actions haven't changed. In Korea, many people, many people all over the world, if you place them on top of the word, you can see they're a fake. You can see your yourself, you're a fake. So it's by the word that we become holy. How much do you have to eat of the word? How much food do you have to eat for you to work today? You know, a person has to eat a certain amount of calories. Well, the word, how much do you have to eat of it? Until you receive the wisdom of God. So you have to eat close to 5,000 verses. Because you can't do this, you know, you meet like with like. So if you meet the wise, then you'll eat the words of the wise. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. You may not know how to make anchovy stock, but if your parents have have cooked some anchovy stock and they and they give it to you and you eat it, then you're eating the nutrition of that anchovy stock. That's why you meet like with like. And that's it's afterwards that you can obey. Why is it you can't obey? Have you eaten the word? Have you cast out your demons? So from today, let's receive miraculous answers. Miracles, obedience is the key. May we all receive this blessing. No matter what anyone says, let's receive this blessing. Let's all pray. Truly good Father, you're giving us something so incredible. But because we're still tied up to our demons, because we're not doing false repentance properly, my actions, I can't even say amen yet. At this time, may we be fixed of this. Father God, may we meditate upon the word. May we receive the the strength to obey. And may we be witnesses where we bring about miracles. May the demons in our our families depart. Our, our businesses that didn't do well, may they do more well. May our children all receive the blessings of prosperity. And our country and our people, we believe they too will all receive this. No matter what anyone says, May we obey the word. And may we all receive the keys to miracles. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit from this time forth to receive the keys of miracles, which is obedience, and to receive answers and to pass blessings down to our children and to be a patriot to others and to help others, those who are determined to do this on their spirits, may you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless.